Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I want to walk you through some of the new calendar features and functions that got released recently and were initially announced back in September at FabCon over in Vienna in Europe. Now, the benefits of this is that there's not only some ways to define certain calendar table types on a single calendar table, but even some optimizations and efficiencies that goes into better query planning that the DAX engine and the model engine can provide given some of the context and column pairings that you can do with that. And even all at the end of this include a calendar table file that you can download for free off of one of my company's websites. So with that being said, let's kick it off in Power BI and get started. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is talk about the new calendar options that we have for the calendar tables. You can see the menu in front of us here. And the one thing to mention is this is in preview, so you would need to go to File, Options, Preview Settings to turn on these new calendar and time intelligence options. But if you have that turned on, all you have to do is right click on the calendar table. And previously, where Marcus date table used to be set, now you have calendar options. What this will do is open it up, give you the old options still to mark as a date table. But in addition, you can define different calendar types, such as a Gregorian, a fiscal, an ISO, a 445. Now, what this does, as you can read uh, here at the top, it allows for improvement of query performance as you analyze data over different periods. That's not just the date. Uh, now, I'm going to open up one of these to show you the pairings. But essentially, when you go and make a new one or edit this, and as you can see, I've already defined three of them that will be available as a free download for this calendar template later on at the end of the video. But if we go in and open it, we give a name, we have an option to pick categories to choose from in here. And these allow us to set one of these and it has these predefined. So we can't add custom levels, but there's about 15 or so to select from. And what's the column that equals this? So category year, the primary column for that, that's the default that I would basically be using. And you get little tool tips to also uh, give you help on what those are. And then any associated columns. So if you have like a year long, a year short, in this case, I prefer the month short as my default versus the long month. So those are associated columns, but you just pair them together. And it does have a data validation button. And you, when you click that, what that is doing is it's confirming that there is the appropriate one-to-many or one-to-one -one relationships with certain items. As an example, with like ISO weeks, which technically don't fall within the regular calendar year, they can actually traverse multiple years. If I was going to go do an example of week of quarter and attempt to add that week of quarter here. Now, if I try to do a validate this, I'm going to get an error saying there's an unexpected relationship with these because it doesn't fit in this calendar type. My year would need to be ISO year for this to work. So it actually helps you to verify that your logic for periods is working correctly. So with that being said, I'm going to exit out of this close without saving. And as I mentioned, you can set as many types as you have columns on your calendar table. I, in the template that I build for most of my clients, have a Gregorian, a fiscal, and an ISO built into here. And again, this file will be available at the end to download for free. I will give you a link to our website for that. But I want to show you the performance differences of this. So I'm going to close this and switch over to a different workbook. Now, this workbook specifically was built with a very large fact table, about 80 million rows, because I wanted to show performance differences. But the nice thing about these calendar tables once defined is that you have the option to use native time intelligence functions and point to them. So traditionally, when you would write something, as an example in front of us, date add prior year, you'd normally point to the date column because that's what you need to iterate over in terms of the date periods. Now, the difference with the define calendar tables. In this case, I have one called default. That was the name instead of Gregorian or fiscal. But instead of pointing to a single column, you just point to default because inside of the logic, when you define it in the calendar table, you do set the date column. So it knows basically by pointing to the whole table, it's only ever going to filter over one column, but it will pick the right column to apply filters to. Historically, you would always filter on the date column, even if you showed something like year or quarter year. So I'm going to open DAX Studio and show you the performance differences of this. All right, so what I have in front of us is I've reconstructed the table using the DAX Studio Query Builder. But basically, here is the table built with the prior year original one, regular date add, no custom calendar. Now take a look at the storage engine cost, but also the timing. So about 
13,000 or 13 seconds, 1.21 uh, milliseconds for this. Now, look at how many rows got loaded. It had to load 438,000 rows because it needed to construct this table to build the query. So the query plan required dim calendar date, fact from all these and then some, but that resulted with, let's see, 4,018 total filters in the where statement. So kind of big, and that took up the vast majority of this query plan to be able to provide the data. Now let's look at the optimized DAX, where the only difference is, is that was using the default table. Now looking at the query plan down below, it's half of the storage engine CPU compute, and the time got shaved to about half as well, a little less than half. And now look at how much was scanned through. This only loaded 4,800 rows versus 480,000, a huge difference. And very specifically, look here. The where statement is not filtering on the date column. You see how the query is asking for year and quarter year? Because I've mapped these, it's going to put those into the query that it's processing, not the date column. So it can intelligently use and find the right columns to create the query plan at the lowest level needed based off of the shape of the visual, where it could not do that before. So 44 total where statements based off of quarter, year, and year. So that is an impressive drop on this. Now it is in preview, so I'm sure some of you will probably find ways where maybe this is inefficient or something else, but overall their goal is to make this be significantly faster and more powerful. But this can help show you how it the query plan from the engine can more intelligently figure out a path and the right filters, the right uh, design of the tables being built into it. So I'm hugely excited about this. I think this has significant implications for better design going forward. And I would argue that uh, by the time this comes out of preview, every single new calendar table going forward should have at a minimum the Gregorian calendar defined, if not fiscal ISO 445, because of these more intelligent query plans that can be ran. Cool stuff. But now I also want to switch gears, show you the template that I updated and I'll provide for free to download based off of this where I've defined all of these. So flipping back to Power BI Desktop. So I have this as a template that I often provide to clients. Uh, you're welcome to use this too as a free thing to download, but I have a calendar table that's been built out, foldered, organized, uh, flagged with some basic stuff. And with calendar tables, there's never a perfect one out of the box for anybody. I'm sure you'll have some flags and other things to add to it. But what this allows you to do is a good starter kit for that. So I have a good significant number of things at every level, including my offset columns that I'm sure you've read about from somebody at some point, but in summary, they basically provide a number that's an anchor for that period. So year offset zero is always current year. Month offset zero is always the, the days in that month. So they make for easy filters on uh, in measures and in visual level filters, page level filters for like easy ranges if you want rolling averages or stuff like that. Um, but the goal isn't to go through every column. It's mostly just to provide you a, a template that has all of these columns. And I've had this for years. So this is new for any of you who've downloaded my calendar table before. But I now have, as I mentioned, the defined characteristics of Gregorian fiscal and ISO built into this where the mapping's already been done. So I've already gone through the hard work of uh, mapping all these out basically for everybody. Uh, and with Tyndall View, what's really nice is you can control A, take this, to a new workbook, and this code will automatically add it to the new workbook. It will make sure the sort orders applied to columns that have numerical pairings, uh, their text fields, the folder organization. So it's a copy paste option to put it into a brand new workbook. And I even went a little bit of, uh, of an extra effort here and in the M uh, Power Query Editor, I made sure to add some annotations to explain what every single column does. And as a reminder for anybody who's maybe not used this, used this before or hasn't used it yet, any one of these steps can be deleted individually, or you can just use the choose columns if there's certain ones you don't want. But it's a nice little template to provide out to you to have something to use as a starter kit uh, if you want to download that. So uh, as you can see in front of us here, this is the website that has both the um, analytic endeavors multi-tool on my separate company um, that I've been building out. And I've decided to also put this there because uh, I'm continuing to do more and more work for, for that company going forward. So yes, this video is on the Havens Consulting channel, but I wanted to provide this. So the link down below to go ahead and download that.
But otherwise, um, feel free to add any comments on some of your testing and implementations of this. Again, it is a preview feature, brand new out of the box within the first month or so. So there will probably be some bugs and other stuff with it. Uh, but it is will it is and will be the the new best practice going forward once the paint has dried on this new feature. So I highly encourage you to adopt that and feel free to check out that file that I mentioned that is available for download. But otherwise, as always, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. Liking, commenting, and subscribing will continue to help this channel grow. I am, as of the making of this video, I am, looks like 97,000. So I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. So thank you all for helping the channel grow for that. But otherwise, I will see you in my next video.